Hey, Trail Lights. You are listening to the Trail Happy Box Hour, broadcasting through the facilities of Trent Radio at 92.7 CFFF FM in Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. My name is Amanda Owen, and joining me today is Megan Ward. And you might be wondering, what's happening at the College on the Hill? Trail will be hosting a virtual games night on March 4th from 6 to 8 p.m. If you're looking to play some games while staying socially distant, this event is for you. Join us over Zoom and you can scan the QR code to register today, which can be found in the Trail Tales newsletter. Are you looking to test your knowledge of Canada? Join us virtually on March 10th at 6 p.m. over Zoom for Canadian Studies and General Trivia, hosted by Grad Trivia. Zoom meeting information can be found in the Trail Tales newsletter. And are you looking to celebrate St. Patrick's Day in style? Then join us on March 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. in Scott House 105 for a painting night. Show off your creative skills and spend some time chatting with those around you. You can register today by clicking the link in the Trail College Instagram bio at Trail College. And do you have research, club and group events, or an interesting story to share? Then the Trail Happy Box radio show wants to hear from you. Email trail at trentu.ca to find out more about how you can share your story with the trail community. As the Trent Varsity saying goes, together we are one Excalibur. Get your one more shot, your booster, as soon as possible to protect yourself and others. And are you looking to help run the East versus West hockey game? Then we need your help. Apply today to become an East versus West co-chair and spend some time volunteering with the colleges. Applications close tomorrow, March 2nd. Find out more today by visiting the student job board. Are you interested in doing a mental health wellness workshop? Then check out the student experience portal to register. The meeting will be happening on Wednesday, March 2nd from 11 to 12 p.m. And I'm now going to pass it off to my co-host, Megan Ward. Thanks, Amanda. If you're just joining us now, you're listening to the Trail Happy Box Hour on 92.7 Trent FM from Peterborough, Canada. I'm your host today, Megan Ward, and I'm joined by Matthew. Matt, can you take a moment and introduce yourself? Hi, Megan. Thanks for having me today. I'm a uh, graduate student in the Sustainability Studies program at Trent, and my research is called Community-Based Land Relations Planning for a Regenerative Food-Growing Future. Uh, a, little bit, a little bit about me. Uh, I've held positions across various organizations at Trent. I was a co-manager of the Trent Market Garden Project in 2019. I was the finance officer for the Sustainable Agriculture and Food Systems Society. I've been a member of Peterborough's Community Medicine Garden Project for a couple of years now. And I currently sit on the board of directors for the Season Spoon Cafe. Wow. So you wear many hats is what you're saying. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Yes, I do. Well, you gave us the sort of title of your research. Do you mind delving in a little bit more and giving us an overview of what you're studying? Yeah. Um, My research project had three areas of focus. Um, First, it aided students and community members in addressing a gap in planning within the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan uh, as it related to the Trent Vegetable Gardens. Uh, Second, it generated common guiding principles uh, for a subset of the food growing spaces on campus with the hopes that it may help them collaborate and navigate future changes uh, as the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan is implemented. Lastly, it sought to address Trent's decision-making bodies where there exist relationships of power, uh, which may conceal tendencies um, to reinscribe settler colonial logics, uh, logic that asserts a rightful dominance of one social group over another, uh, or the benefits of only specific kinds of knowledge, and perhaps most profoundly, uh, narratives that naturalize relationships to land as object and property. Uh, So through this project, These experiences and the understandings gained can be made more explicit for decision-making bodies, students, and community members alike, and may provide a case study uh, toward helping redress unhelpful power asymmetries in the future. Wonderful. Do you mind taking a minute and explaining what the Trent Land and Nature Area Plan is and maybe what the sort of goals are of that plan as well? Mm Mm-hmm. 
Um, so the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan, um, so TLNAP um, for short, uh, is Trent's regulatory and guidance framework for all future development projects on Trent lands. Uh, it serves as a process document outlining regulatory references and the institution's management tasks in order to meet its compliance obligations. Um, I'll, I'll let listeners uh, navigate to its guiding principles, uh, which can be viewed on page 35. Um, and similarly, many of its goals, for example, for the nature areas on page 153, or its university districts on page 89. Um, but goals and guiding principles, although nice statements, in my opinion, are not what we need to be paying close attention to. Uh, what I think has the greatest bearing on outcomes from the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan is that this document serves as an ideological tool. It's a tool for governance. Um, that perpetuates certain modes of interaction, ways of thinking about land and water, and imposes a specific structure on how community members can interact with the decision-making process at Trent uh, regarding its lands and waters. Uh, so through my research on the TLNAP, I hope to demonstrate how this governance document limits public engagement and discourse, and why that has important implications for our collective capacity to innovate as a society. Do you have any examples that you could provide us with of sort of everything that you just talked about there? Oh, sure. Um, so, you know, for example, what is ideological about this document? Well, uh, private property isn't inherent in humankind's relationship to land. It's a construct and the management of land through that lens uh, of that construct gives rise to the logic that asserts the rightful dominance of one social group over another. Uh, hegemony is a common characteristic in settler colonialism. Uh, how Trent acquired the land to begin with through expropriation and then its endowment land is a topic deserving of more research and public awareness. Uh, and the settler colonial histories on this land before Trent arrived are part of that narrative that need to be made explicit for us to grapple uh, with the socio-environmental consequences. Um, so that's one example. Another is the, the management tasks and the public institution accountability. Whether or not the management tasks are carried out in full and meaningful engagement is conducted with community members who currently maintain land and water-based projects within Trent's campus. So whether or not the management tasks are carried out in full and meaningful engagement is conducted with community members uh, who currently maintain land and water-based projects within Trent's campus is not entirely answerable. Um, the Trent Lands Committee and Finance and Property Committee, who oversee the TLNAP, are responsible for recommending the approval of all development plans to the Board of Governors, and at the same time are also the authoritative bodies on monitoring the management tasks associated with the developments. So if there is a discrepancy, there is no public oversight at the decision-making level. Um, and so it's important to, to know that these are closed door subcommittees with all of their meetings in chambers and not open for public access or the dissemination of information. Um, and lastly, I, I think it's uh, demonstrable that in the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan, there's a bias um, throughout the entirety of the document toward a narrative that naturalizes relationships to land as object and property. Uh, stated plainly in its reporting process on page 225, it is the Finance and Property Committee that is identified to monitor the success of the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan in relation to the University Green Network and Nature Areas. Uh, further, the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan promotes uh, reductionist logic by suggesting the management of our natural world can be distilled down to key performance indicators. 
Um, throughout the entirety of this document, we can see a repetitive use of non-committal language as a tool for governance and uh, quote unquote flexibility. Um, what this really translates into is weakened protection. Um, this, especially as it relates to the natural areas on campus, has profound implications on what outcomes can result. In contrast, uh, kin-centered logic of our interconnection to the land and common language that reflects ascertainable levels of care are noticeably absent in the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan. Um, and I could go on, you know, this has implications for the, the food growing spaces on campus, uh, as well as key performance indicators are easily manipulated. Um, yeah, it's easy to stretch or skew data, um, especially when there's no oversight uh, into the raw data itself. Um, often this is done by underreporting a part or multiple parts of the complete context. Um, of course, something in part can be true um, without being wholly true. Um, so in the absence of a sustained and meaningful engagement with those who currently maintain the land and water-based projects within Trent's campus, the lands planning process risks displacing and undermining the functioning of key community resources and sustainable initiatives. Uh, a circumstance that seems antithetical to each of the Trent land and nature areas uh, plan principles. Well, thank you for those examples, because I think that really highlights what you were saying before and makes it even more applicable to not just Trent students, but also everyone in Peterborough who sort of benefits from having Trent here. So going off of what you were sort of mentioning at the end, these community spaces, what types of, fr of food growing spaces specifically does Trent have and how does the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan pose a risk to them, if it does at all? Mm. Yeah, we have several growing spaces on campus. Uh, the Trent Vegetable Gardens has a rooftop garden on the Environmental Science Building and a larger field garden that is situated to the northeast behind the DNA Building. Uh, the Clean Tech Commons Master Plan, which was adopted into the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan, showed a road that would be developed through the field garden site. Um, this was the first area of my research that aided students and community members in addressing the gap in planning. Uh, imagine the last time you saw a road construction site uh, and then picture that going through a food growing space. Um, you can get an idea of the risk that poses to everything there. Um, so just a little background, the, the food grown there is made into meals at the Season Spoon Cafe and is also given to student volunteers and community food organizations. Uh, the Trent Vegetable Gardens are run by a student levy group that offers students food growing experience as well as employment during the summer months. Um, the field garden also has community garden plots where members from the Peterborough Community Medicine Garden Group, BIPOC Collective, Trent staff, students, and others grow food and plant medicines for their consumption. Do you know just offhand how long these community spaces have been here for? Have they been, are they new initiatives or do you know if they're a bit older? They're long standing. Uh, the Trent Vegetable Gardens, the, uh, the field site, has been around for approximately 15 years now. So they really are pieces then of Trent's history. So I think it is, as you sort of mentioned this whole time, important to do what we can to not just preserve them for now, but conserve them for the future as well. Absolutely. These are very well established relationships. Um, and as I'll speak to later, it's not something that you can just pick up and relocate and, um, you know, replicate um, yeah, that's that's just not the relational nature of uh, of of our reality and these projects. Right. And we're going to take a quick break to listen to Helena Deland's swimmer. The sun has heard me want the water when it crashed. She's on the sand You hoped it would be warm But you say pulling out your hand Thank you. 
really understand. If I could turn back time. Swimmer by Helena Deland. If you're just tuning in, you are listening to the Trail Happy Box Hour, broadcasting through the facilities of Trent Radio at 92.7 CFFF FM in Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. My name is Amanda Owen, and joining me today is Megan Ward. Yeah, so another um, space on campus is the Trent Market Garden, and it's run by the Sustainable Agriculture and Food Systems Society, uh, another student led levy group. Uh, that also offers growing experience and summer employment. Uh, they focus on growing food to be sold at the downtown Peterborough Farmers Market, and they're situated slightly northeast of the Trent Vegetable Gardens uh, in the Experimental Farm Area, which is identified for relocation in the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan. Uh, there are several risks within the proposal. Uh, one, it would double the walking distance from the core campus, uh, which is already a 10 to 15 minute walk. Um, two, it would eliminate the proximity to the Trent Vegetable Gardens, which will affect the sharing of equipment, labor and best practices, uh, as well as just you know gathering uh, for student interactions over lunch breaks. Um, it also risks disagreements and the loss of autonomy for students. Um, especially student-led projects in the newly proposed Trent Farm space. Uh, and this was really the second area of my research that generated common guiding principles uh, for the subset of food growing spaces affected by these relocation plans. Uh, this included the Trent Apiary Club, which is also located in the experimental farm area. And they maintain beehives on campus and provide students and community members the opportunity to care for honeybees and process honey. Um, the experimental farm, renamed the Trent Farm, um, is also part of this subset and is relocating to Pioneer Road adjacent to the nature areas. Uh, it is run by the Trent School of Environment and provides students in the Sustainable Agriculture and Food Systems undergraduate degree uh, opportunities in their program to learn from field trials uh, for crop and soil sciences. 
Um, it is the hope that this research may help them collaborate and navigate these future changes um, as the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan is implemented. Um, and each of these projects provide distinct and remarkable opportunities for learning uh, and the real strength for a regenerative program offering at Trent will come from their ability to integrate and share resources. Um, also on campus is the First People's House of Learning Medicine Gardens, run by the First People's House of Learning, and provides Indigenous learners with multiple growing plots and a medicine wheel garden for native plant medicines and foods. Uh, their location next to the Zosky building is not affected by the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan. Um, and finally, it is important to note the social and ecological interconnections uh, that are threatened by these planning processes. Uh, the third area of my research looks at Trent's decision, uh, Trent's decision making apparatus, where there exist relationships of power which may conceal tendencies to reinscribe uh, the settler colonial logics that I mentioned earlier, uh, narratives that naturalize relationships uh, to land as object and property, they pose a profound risk to these projects. Um, you know, as we just spoke, several of these projects are well established with reciprocal relationships across the land and with its ecology, uh, disruptions to the complex living nature and social fabric that sustain the functioning of these systems put both the land and the groups that are tied to it at risk. Uh, the land and food growing projects co-produce and sustain each other. Um, constructs such as the mitigation hierarchy found on page 218 of the TLNAP, um, they look good on paper, but what is the result when it hits the ground? And there's a pun intended there. Um, the case for the food growing spaces demonstrate the limitations that accompany a worldview where land-based systems are viewed in fragmented parts, uh, standalone objects that are easily relocated or replicated, essentially treated like property. And it risks failing to comprehend or appreciate the relational whole that gives rise to a healthy landscape and the sustainable projects for experiential learning that Trent desires to have accreditation for. Right. And, you know, I think it's so interesting because I did my whole undergrad at Trent and I'm now a grad student here and I had no idea of the community relations that these growing spaces had, the academic relations, the relations to clubs on campuses. I don't know why, but I was just never made aware of how integral it is to Trent life and to Peterborough community. And now we're talking about all this and my mind is just blown because I'm like, what do you mean we're going to disrupt all of this? It's so important. <laughs> so I think this interview is so, so useful because I'm sure I am not the only person who, despite having like working on campus, doing a ton of volunteering, wasn't aware of what was at risk and what we already had. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We have to get the word out. Um, you know, like I say, Trent already has the, the components necessary for this type of accreditation and learning. Um, and it's, you know, it's just being overlooked. So yeah, right. very important. Yeah. Well, unfortunately we are nearing our time. So I'm just going to jump to the final goal of your research because I really want to know what your overall goal for this is, but we did have other questions planned. So perhaps we're going to see Matt again next year and talk more about his research. <laughs> but for now we'll wrap this up. So what is the overall goal of your research here at Trent? Okay. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, the impetus for my work and goal from the onset uh, in 2019 was to address the Lands Plan Committee regarding their proposed road development that would bisect the Trent Vegetable Gardens. Uh, we were successful in navigating the bureaucratic channels and getting ourselves to the discussions table. Uh, in October of 2021, we received an indirect email confirmation uh, that the administration no longer had plans for a road development that would bisect the Trent Vegetable Gardens. Um, on one hand, it was a resounding success for this project, um, but there remains loose ends for how students and staff will navigate the implementation phase of the Trent Land and Nature Areas Plan. Uh, will they look to the common guiding principles found in this research to integrate and collaborate? Uh, across Trent's food growing spaces. Also, 
uh, there is a critical piece to be written. You know, long histories of settler colonialism and the displacement and dis disconnection of humans and non-humans alike from the land is a major issue that we have not remediated. And its impacts continue, you know, broadly across society today. Um, universities are supposed to play an important role in forging solutions. Uh, they are places to prefigure and model solutions to problems that our society faces. Yet, here we are at Trent. We see current examples where heavy-handed planning processes threaten to displace sustainable food growing projects and disrupt the socio-ecological system that supports them in functioning optimally. Um, I think it's important to see universities as microcosms of the wider world. We imagine these institutions to be a place where we strive to innovate and better our society, but are these institutions living up to their image and incorporating the highest levels of learning? Um, can universities get a grasp on dealing with fundamental issues? And this is a valid question, um, especially when we see on more than one occasion, it is the community that steps in to foster appropriate action. Um, you know, revisit the Twin Pad Arena development, for example. Um, this research project may have achieved its actionable goal, but we need to dig deeper and ask critical questions um, about the usefulness of worldviews and the governance tools that inform our decision-making processes. It's a critique that comes from a place of care, of wishing to see Trent University live up to its stated principles and truly become a bastion of hope in, you know, a world that's just fraught with fundamental issues, um, a place where we might actually be able to create a cohesive learning environment with the many interrelated relationships of regenerative food systems um, that are already here and a part of the land. Right. I think this has just been such an eye-opening interview, and I hope that our audience feels the same. Matt, if anyone is interested in learning more or maybe getting in contact with you, where should they look? Oh, please do. Um, people can have a look on Instagram. I'm putting up a poster when this airs uh, with the various trends and community groups that are involved in doing this work. Um, so you can find me at Dutrico spelled D-U-T-R-Y-C-O on Instagram, or feel free to reach out to me by email, uh, Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, Dutry, D-U-T-R-Y, at trentu.ca, and we'll be happy to get you plugged into the action. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Matt, so much for joining us. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in as well. You've been listening to the Trail Happy Box Hour. This is our grad student podcast. If you're interested in learning more about Trail College or the grad student podcast, please don't hesitate to email us at trail at trentnew.ca. Thanks for tuning into the Trail Happy Box Hour, broadcasting through the facilities of Trent Radio at 92.7 CFFF FM in Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. My name is Amanda Owen, and we look forward to chatting next week. Check out Trail College on Instagram for more hashtag TrailWow content at Trail College. Bye for now.